What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at buttons for custom kinter. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're gonna look at buttons for custom Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guidebook. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Get your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. All right, in the last video, we started talking about custom kinter. In this video, I wanna continue on and talk about the first main widget, which is the button. Now I get it, this is not that exciting. It's a button, right? But there's some things you need to know. You could do different things with custom kinter buttons than you could do with regular buttons. And there's a little caveat in there that uh, will trip you up and I'll show you that right away. If you're used to using regular buttons with Kinter, this is slightly different in their use, so you're gonna wanna watch this. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Normal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter playlist. So check it out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm just calling it CTK underscore button, CTK for custom Kinter, I guess. And uh, this is our basic custom Kinter starter code. We looked at this in the last video. We're gonna be using this default code going forward. I'm using the dark theme and the dark blue color theme and everything else is the same. So let's come down here, let's create a button. I'm gonna call it my underscore button. And this is gonna be a custom Kinter.ctk button. Now notice the C and the T are capitalized. The K is lowercase. And then the B again is button. This is the convention for all the widgets. The first little CTK thing is capitalized in this way and then the widget itself is usually capitalized. So, all right, so let's just create a basic button here. I'm gonna call this, we're gonna put it this in root. We want the text to equal hello world. Boom, 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 all right? And let's give this a command of hello. So we want the command hello to run whenever we click this button. And we don't have that yet, so let's just come up here and real quick define hello. And for now, we'll just pass. So let's come down here in my underscore button dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 80 to really push it down the screen. So, okay, if we go ahead and save this and run it, we can guess what this is gonna look like. So I'm in my ctkinter.com directory. Let's run python ctk button.py. And when we do, we just get this basic button. Now this is the dark theme with the dark blue color scheme, right? So when you hover, it changes color. The text of the button is white. Okay, pretty basic, pretty simple. If this is all you wanna do, that's all you need to do, right? So we click this, nothing happens yet. But we can configure this button in a whole lot of different ways. And also when we want to do something with this button, it's slightly different than with tkinter. So this is the thing I was talking about. It's a little bit, a little bit weird, not weird, just a little different. So I'll show you how to do that right now. In fact, let's just come down here. Let's create a label real quick, my underscore label. This is gonna be a CT, I know we haven't talked about CTK labels yet, but <laughs> there's not much to talk about with the label. I'm gonna set the text equal to nothing. And then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y 20, push down screen a little bit. So now we come up here and whenever we click that button, we wanna change the text of our label. So let's go my label. Now normally, and this is the tricky part. Well, not too tricky, just different, right? Normally with Kinter, you would config and then set the text equal to whatever, right? This isn't gonna work. If we run this, we're gonna get an error here. Whoops, that's the wrong error. If <laughs> we come down here, this should be custom tkinter.ctk label. All right, so we're gonna get a different error if we try to run this and then click this button. Boom, you see, oh, very angry stuff. Why? Because config doesn't work in custom Kinter, right? That's the shorthand we use in Kinter. It doesn't work with custom Kinter. So this always has to be configure, right? So if we save this and run it, get rid of this error on this guy again. Now when we click this, boom, it just says whatever down here. So keep that in mind, just a little different than regular Kinter, but you know, something that's very important when you come right down to it, because the button won't work otherwise. So we can put whatever we want here. I've just put the word whatever. Uh, just for fun, let's put whatever the text is of the button. And we can get that in custom T Kinter by calling my underscore button dot C get, and then we would just want the text. And actually we wanna put this in quotation marks. So this will just return whatever the text is of our button. In our case, it's hello world. So let's go ahead and save this, run it. Uh, you know, I don't know why you would ever wanna know what the text of your button is, but if you did, that's one way to get it. 
And there we go. So, okay, it says hello world there. That's kind of cool. Now let's play around with this button. We can do all kinds of things with this button. We can configure it in lots of different ways that you can't with regular buttons in Kinter. So it's really cool uh, how we can play around with this. And so let's come up here and do that. So we can come here to our button and I'm gonna put all these things on separate lines just so it's easier to read here. So what can we do? So the first thing we can do is set a height and a width. So let's set this height to 100 and let's set the width to say 200. Now this is very cool because in regular Kinter, if you wanna change the size of the button, you have to just sort of change the font size of the font to a bigger font to make the button bigger. This is a quick and easy way you can change the size of the button itself using custom Kinter. Very cool, let's save this and run it, see how that looks. And now we have this giant button and uh, that's kind of cool. Now you'll see it's kind of squarish, but also sort of rounded. We can change that as well. We'll look at that in a second. But first, let's look at the font. This is too small for this bigger button now. How do we change that? Super easy, just like with the regular T Kinter, we can set the font. And here I'm just gonna change it to Helvetica. And let's give it a font size of like 24, or something like that, nice and big. We can go ahead and save this and run it. And boom, we get nice big text. That's kind of cool. We still have tiny text down here, right? Uh, so that's nice. We can change the color of that text if we want to very easily. So we can do that just by changing the text underscore color. And so I'm just gonna call this black. You could also use your hex codes. So whatever the hex color code for black is, I can't remember offhand. I think white is 000000, 000 something like that. But all your hex codes you can use, or you could just use words like black, right? So if we save this and run it, we now get black text, it's kind of cool. You'll notice that the color is different as we hover. So we can change both the background color of the button and the hover color. So let's change the background color first. You would think that would be the background color, but it's not, it's actually for buttons, it's the foreground color. So if we wanna change this to like red, make it really obnoxious. And again, you can also use your color codes. Anytime we do anything with color, with Kinter or custom T Kinter, you can always use your hex codes or just the word itself. So now it's this obnoxious red color, which is you know horrible looking, but you can change it to whatever color you like. So how do we change the hover color? Well, as you might guess, that is just hover underscore color. So I don't know, let's make this green. Let's try to make this as ugly as we possibly can, right? <laughs> right? So we got Christmas colors going on, red and green. So as you hover, it changes. Very cool. Like I said, we can change the radius. So you can see it's kind of square, but the corners are a little rounded. We can change the radius for that by changing the corner underscore radius. And this, you can change it to anything you want. The higher the number, the more rounded it becomes. So if we save this, come back over here and run this guy. Now we get sort of a very rounded button. Very cool. You can change that to whatever you want. Now you'll notice that the background, the back background is transparent. And you could tell because of the roundedness here, this is still a square thing, but the border has been rounded and where the rest of the stuff is, that's the background. And you can see it's transparent. It's just the same color as our general app background, but we can change that if we want by changing the background color. So let's go BG underscore color, and let's just change this to white so that we can really see it stand out. It's gonna be ugly, but you know, that's what we're trying to do here. And you see now the background is white. So as this becomes more curved, more of that background will show up. So that's cool, what else can we do? Well, we could put a border around this curved button. That's really neat. So to do that, we just set the border width border underscore width. And let's set that to like 10 to make it really big so that we can see it. Save this and run it. Now we get this uh, border here. And you can see it's sort of gray, which is well, whatever, decent color. We can change that color as well by changing the border underscore color. So if we wanna change that to <laughs> yellow or something horribly colored, we can do that, <laughs> now it's got a border, a big thick 10 pixel border of yellow. So those are your main things. There's a couple other attributes I didn't talk about, but they're not super important. 
You can set the state of this as well. And I guess we could look at that real quick if you really wanted to. It's the same as Kinter though, right? So we could set the state equal to disabled. If we save this and run it, now when we hover, nothing happens. You can see the text is sort of grayed out. When I'm clicking this here, nothing has happened because the state is disabled. If you then wanted to enable it again, you could set the state to just normal. Save this and run it. I mean, normal is the default, so we don't have to set it to that. See, again, it works now. Very cool. And that's all there is to it. So that's the custom Kinter button. Much more versatile than a regular T Kinter button and really kind of intuitive and easy to use. If you want to change the hover color, it's hover color. If you want to change the quarter radius, it's corner radius. If you want to change the border width, it's border width. It's very intuitive. Border color is border color, right? So uh, super easy, not a lot of stuff that you have to memorize. It's just sort of, oh, obvious, but you might have to look it up first few times as you get used to it. But after that, it's just going to be super easy to do. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. Enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.